Hello, I'm Atuba Judge. Now, 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 this week I told you, you know, remember I told you last week that we're going to uh, talk to talk about issues dealing with marriage and then the thoughts of God. Now, we're still talking about assessing the knowledge of the Lord. Praise God. See, yesterday the Lord had to deal with this coronavirus of a thing. And I know, listen, as we exalt the name of Jesus, that's what the Lord is commanding us to do this season. This season. You, a child of God, tell everyone about Jesus. So what should I tell them? That he is Lord. Praise God. That he is Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's the truth. He is Lord. Now remember what the Bible says, as I live, every knee will bow to me and every tongue will confess. That's what he says. So you as a child of God, this is the opportunity you have to advertise Jesus. There's no special talk about Corona. No, no, no. Jesus is Lord over everything. Praise God. Even over the Corona. So when Corona comes before the Lord Jesus Christ, it bows to him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, now Isaiah chapter 55. Now, that's where we've been on. Isaiah 55 and verse 7 says, Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. See, I shared with you on Monday yesterday. David did something wicked in the sight of God. Now, when you look at it with... with Normal understanding. He said, but what did David do that is wrong? He said, I told you anything that doesn't line up with the word of God or the thoughts of God is wicked. You know what? Because it, it ends up producing wickedness. No matter how sincere you are. See, you, you may be sincerely bothered about an issue. I say, okay, I want to do something. Now, if what you want to do doesn't line up with the thoughts of God concerning that thing, the end of it is going to produce wickedness. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now that, that's the truth. So he said, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him turn, let him return unto the Lord. You Notice he used the word, let him return unto the Lord. Why did he say return unto the Lord? Because he has always supposed to be with the Lord. He has always supposed to be thinking what the Lord is thinking. Now it's the same thing with marriage. You see, now, if your marriage is going through any crisis, I'll just tell you the truth. It's very simple. There is no special talk on marriage. There is no special teaching on marriage. A, 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 a better Christian or good Christians will make good marriages. Now, who's a good Christian? A good Christian is not the one that is in church before the doors of the church are open and leaves and be the last person to leave church every day. A good Christian is not though. A good Christian doesn't necessarily even mean that you're a pastor. It is good. It doesn't. A good Christian is the one whose life shows that he depends only on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who a good Christian is. Now, if, 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 you, if your life is completely resting or trusting in the Lord in all your ways, see, now that's remember we said in Proverbs, in all your ways acknowledge him. So the one who's trusting in the Lord at all times will acknowledge the Lord even in his marriage. Now I remember on Friday I told you, look, even before you get married, don't just rush into, oh, I want to get married. No, go before the Lord first of all. Get his mind concerning what, what Lord, what, what was on your heart when you brought forth this marriage institution? What was on your mind? I want to know. And then the Lord will begin to open up his mind. And I told you, it's not when two weeks to your marriage or two days to your marriage, you go pray that prayer. You start now, now, now that this word is coming to you. You say, oh, but I'm just 16 years old. Start now. Oh, I'm just 25 years old. Start now. Praise God. Start now. See? Now, now I say, okay, what about me? I'm 35 years old. And, and I don't have, hey, start now. Praise God. And, and, and let me tell you the truth about this. Now I told you, the, the greatest gift that God has given to us is the ability to repent. Now when you go before God, it doesn't matter how old you are. You go before God and say, Father, I want to accept your thoughts concerning marriage. I just want to know what you think. Because if I know what you think, I want to follow it. Now you know what you're doing? You are repenting. 
And let me tell you the beautiful thing about repentance. If there sincerely has been something that has been preventing you from getting married, or there's something preventing you from enjoying your marriage, the moment you come before the Lord like this, and he begins to open up his thoughts to you and you accept his thought. That is repentance. Now the grace of God is going to be released specially on you. And that grace is going to bring peace to your home. That grace is going to bring you to the place where you will be found if you're a lady or bring you to the place where you will find the right person as a, as a man and get married to the person. I'm telling you the truth. Repentance causes that grace to be released upon you. Anytime you repent, I'll tell you the truth. Anytime you repent, a grace is released on you. That's why you must understand the difference between repenting and asking for forgiveness. Asking someone for forgiveness doesn't mean you have repented. See, you say, eh, but I'm sorry now. It doesn't mean you have repented. It just means that, oh, I'm sorry for letting this thing affect you the way it did. But, but I can still go on doing what I'm doing, but I'll avoid you this time. See? But repentance is, oh, now I see why this thing was wrong. Now I see. And hey, let me tell you this. You, you cannot repent until you know what you are repenting onto. See? So repentance is not just turn away. Turn away to where? You may turn away to the wrong place again doesn't mean you've repented. Repenting means, oh, I see that where I'm going is wrong and this is the reason it's wrong. And now I see that this is the right way and if I follow this way, I'll, I'll get it right. So I, I turn from this wrong way to the right way. Now that's what repentance is. It means from that moment, you will be walking in the right path. Praise God. Now listen, when you, it, it doesn't matter where your marriage is right now. Don't start putting blame on it's you, it's this person. Forget about those things. Let me tell you this. If you are going to solve issues in your life or in your marriage, the first thing you need to do is take responsibility. You must take responsibility. So, but, but I'm not the one that did. Oh, oh, relax. What I mean by taking responsibility is this. I'm going to take responsibility to make this thing work. I'm going to take responsibility to make this thing good. And let me tell you the secret about this. The one who takes responsibility and aligns himself with God's word is the one that is going to be blessed. There's something the Lord told me several years ago. And I'll share it with you. And then I'll close. The Lord said to me, you know, he said in scriptures, if your ways pleases the Lord, if a man's ways pleases the Lord. The Lord will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. You know, I, I, I knew this. The Lord told me about this even before I got married. And I knew one thing about my life. I'm not going to have a troubled marriage. Never. Why? It's very simple. I'll just make sure my way is pleasing to the Lord. Now, what does it mean to make your way pleasing to the Lord? You don't come and say, I tithe, I go to church, I come on. That's not the way of way pleasing to the Lord. Your way pleasing to the Lord is finding out from the Lord, what do I do concerning this situation? Praise God. Now, that, that's how it is. Now, I'm going to go into this tomorrow. Now, I'll just continue from here tomorrow because I've got to stop here right now. Praise God. Listen, the blessing of the Lord is coming upon your marriage. And he will do you good. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.